A survey was taken a few years ago that asked 300 professionals one question. What's the worst thing that can happen in sports? The first scene in a movie is everything. It's the first thing you see, giving you the first emotions and setting up both pacing and tone for what you're about to watch. In an age of short form online content, nailing the opening to your movie and getting viewers invested in the first few minutes is as much important as it is hard. And I think no movie does it better than 2017's Molly's Game. Written and directed by the legendary Aaron Sorkin, that dude's well known for his fast-paced snappy dialogue, he writes almost unrealistic yet highly engaging conversations, and from the first five minutes of his directorial debut, it is clear that his style has played through beyond just the script. This is a true story, but except for my own, I've changed all the names, and I've done my best to obscure identities for reasons that'll become clear. I'm Molly Bloom. And right now, I'm ranked third in North America in women's moguls. I grew up in Loveland, Colorado, about two hours north of Denver. I have a BA in political science from the University of Colorado, where I graduated summa cum laude with a 3.9 GPA. The median LSAT score at Harvard Law School is 169. My score? It takes about a hundred seconds of runtime for you to understand exactly what our protagonist is like. She's a perfectionist, an overanalyzer, has a big ego and a competitive attitude. And it's not just thanks to the dialogue, it's the camera work that complements her body language and the editing that visualizes the thoughts in her brain going 100 miles per hour. She's feeling restless, anxious and on edge. Of course she is. She's about to do the most important performance of her life. And the movie wants you to know exactly what that's like. Not just know, but feel. I had what's called rapid onset scoliosis. My spine was curved at 63 degrees and I'd need a seven hour surgical procedure that involved straightening my spine, extracting bone from my hip, fusing 11 vertebrae together and fastening steel rods to the fused segments. She's gonna be fine. Oh. I wouldn't let her ski anymore. Definitely not moguls. And obviously skiing competitively is out of the question. <laughs> I was on skis again in a year. With roller coaster like pacing, some important backstory is set up. The exposition will come into play in just a couple of minutes, but the way it's done sets up the rest of the movie. There is a very jarring design choice in the entire movie that turns some people away from the whole experience. After a time skip, the movie splits in two the present and the past. The present is presented. <laughs> The present is presented in a serious, dramatic and slow burn way, and the whole story is intercut with flashbacks to the past, which are high paced, action backed and Jessica Chastain's voiceover that's at times faster than Eminem's oh, rapping. Either you love it or hate it, one thing's for sure, that back and forth pacing speed is set up perfectly in the opening scene. We go from fast to slow to fast. It's the last round of qualifying for the Salt Lake City Olympics. This is the champion run at Deer Valley. The altitude's 8,100 feet and the pitch is 52 degrees, which is the same as the sides of the Great Pyramids. The wind's 20 to 25 miles an hour blowing left to right. It's three below zero at the top of the slope. And with 17 skiers in front of me, it's gonna be like trying to stick a landing on a frozen infinity pool. Side note, I love when movies use graphics and stills in their editing. I guess it kind of reminds me of YouTube editing. And it's cool to see that some of these techniques are still applied in Hollywood. Like when she mentions the pyramids with the way it's quickly and effortlessly shown with a graphic and a transition between the scenes. It's an audio-visual medium after all. You might mishear what's being said or blink and miss it. But with both senses being stimulated at the same time, same time with the exact same information, it's checkbox. So much attention to what at first glance seems like useless information. The size of the mountain or the pyramids have nothing to do with the movie. It bears no importance to anything or anyone except her. I can make the Olympic team right now. Go get it. And if I have three perfect runs in Salt Lake, the best runs of my life, I can beat the Austrians and the Swiss and have a realistic shot at the podium then law school, and then a startup, a foundation that seeds entrepreneurial women. 
the camera work and editing, the sound design and acting, the writing and directing, the attention to detail. It's all there to put you in the moment. All so carefully crafted to work like a well-oiled machinery. It's almost manipulative to get your blood pumping and heart racing. It perfectly encapsulates that dreadful feeling before a big race. When everything else stops to matter and the silence between the words ready, set, and go feel like a lifetime. You are here to witness her success story, to see her go against all odds and achieve everything she's ever wanted. The movie is called The Molly's Game and she's about to lose it all. Good snow contact, calm of her body, legs together, good shape, no line deviation, set up for the D-spin and Stick the landing. Now two things you need to know before the second trick, which will be a 720. The first is that when visibility is bad the way it is now, race officials toss pine boughs on the course so the skiers have some foreground depth reference. The second is that the tightness of your bindings is determined by what's called a din setting. If you're a beginner, your din setting is probably a two or three. If you're an experienced weekend skier, it's probably seven or eight. Mine's 15. My boots are basically welded to my skis, right? So how does this happen? It happened because I hit a pine bough that had become frozen in the snow. And I hit it so precisely that it simply snapped the release of my bindings. Right in that moment, I didn't have time to calculate the odds of that happening because I was about to land pretty hard on my digitally remastered spinal cord, which was being held together by spare parts from an erector set. None of this has anything to do with poker. I'm only mentioning it because I wanted to say to whoever answered that the worst thing that could happen in sports was fourth place at the Olympics. Seriously, fuck you.